So, activity, guided discussion. Um, what causes us to behave the way we do? Why do people commit crime? Uh, we want students to give ideas. Teacher writes them on the board. At the bottom of the board. Okay, after five minutes or so of discussion, ideas. Okay, um, teacher splits the board into two sides. And then he gives a brief explanation of the structure action debate. Summarising thus, structure views say that there are structures and systems and patterns of behaviour which limit human action. So our, our choices and our behaviours are constrained. Uh, we don't have choices because of the pattern of behaviour around us. An example of this is people living in cities are less um, integrated into society. They have less close bonds and attachments and relationships with those around them compared to people who live in villages and in rural areas where people have closer relationships and feel closer to each other. And so therefore people in cities are more likely to commit suicide because they are less bonded, they feel less responsibility to others and less duty to others. Um, it matters less if they commit suicide um, because their role towards others in society is less strong and less important. And so this is one way in which um, the structure and the pattern of behaviour in a place can affect behaviour. Um, same is true of family life. Men and women have different family roles because the pattern of behaviour is based around what has been done before and it's based around the limitation for a woman which is the burden to her body in, in terms of childbirth and rearing and nurturing the child. A man does not have the same burden and therefore he has a different role where it's it's more convenient, it makes more sense for society for him to go out and to be the breadwinner. Um, and therefore this, this pattern of behaviour is not only natural because of the different um, capacities and different burdens of the male and female, but also it is culturally uh, normal because of the pattern of behaviour being part of our culture. The social roles for men and women are different. Therefore, these are two examples of, of the structure of society affecting human behaviour and limiting the choices that people have. On the other hand, the action approach is emphasising our choices and the fact that we do have free will and we do make choices which affect the pattern of behaviour itself. And so human beings make choices. But the reason they make choices is because of the way they see the world. It is their definition of the social roles that they perform which dictates and determines how they perform those roles. So if a man wishes to be a new type of dad or a new man, he has a different relationship with his children and with his partner compared to a traditional dad or a traditional man who has perhaps more authoritarian, disciplinarian, um, more traditional role in being a breadwinner less emotional involvement with the kids. And so, in this case, we're talking about the partly the psychology of the individual in determining how they behave. But this is a sociological perspective because it is saying that the psychology of the individual and how they see the world as an individual is based on their 
relationships with others and how others respond to them. Um, for example, in being labelled by others, they may change their sense of who they are and they might start to think of themselves along the lines of the label. Again, this suggests we do have choices because we can respond to the label, we can resist the label, we can reject the label, or we may end up conforming to the label. It depends how much freedom we have. If people behave towards us as if we were bad, we might find it difficult to get a job, to get a good education, and that could be a result of the labelling, and then we might end up fulfilling that label and being bad in reality because our status is as a bad person. That becomes our master status. But we always have freedom, we always have choice, we always have the ability to change the outcome of any situation based on how we interpret the situation. So if someone says you're bad, but we don't have a sense of being bad, and we don't accept that label, and we respond to it by resisting it, um, by changing our behaviour, then obviously it means we do have choice, we do have free will, because we are able to change our minds and change the minds of others about us because of how we think about the situation. So this is a much more optimistic view in one sense, in the sense that you can change your mind more than you can change your body, um, where you live, um, how much you earn. Changing your mind about something is perhaps the first starting point in changing your behaviour. So it suggests that um, there is freedom. Um, all the psychological, all the individual thinking and, and points of view of the individual which guide behaviour according to this social action approach are most important. They, that's what they, they emphasise as the causes and determinants of behaviour. So now the, the task is for the students to put all the points that they made, which are on the board, under the category that they think they belong under, whether it's the structural view or the social action view, and to be able to explain why they think they should go there. Because this is the first step in exploring these theories and being able to compare them. If you can understand the similarities and differences between the theories, then you are able to evaluate and look at the strengths and weaknesses in the theories. For example, functionalism and Marxism, they're both structuralist theories, therefore they're both going to say good things about each other in one sense, because they're structuralist theories. They will like that aspect of the theory um, that is different to theirs in other ways. They'll like the fact that they're structuralists. However, there are big differences between them in terms of how they view the structures and what they think about the structures. On the other hand, the social action theories will make big criticisms of the structuralist theories, and the other way around, the structuralists will criticise the action theories. The structuralists will be criticised for under-emphasising agency and choice of individuals and over-emphasising structures. And the social action theories will be criticised for under-emphasising the effect and the context of structures in determining individual choices and restricting choices um, for overemphasizing agency and choice. And that is one very basic but very important and fundamental way of evaluating theories. There are many similarities and differences between all of the theories and that is essentially how you gain higher marks is by being able to compare them.